Folks, welcome back. This is the first official market report for 2022. It's for the City of Toronto for week ending January 5th. If you get value out of these reports, please share these with all your family and friends, anyone that can get value and would enjoy these videos. I'm going to start off with some insights already in the very first few days of 2022. Insights from the streets of Toronto, working real estate every single day. We're working with, with several buyer clients and sellers. And, and this one experience that happened that, that happens way too many times to us, working with our buyer client, there's not a lot of choices out there, especially in, in the detached market not a lot of choices to buy. So when a property comes on the market, and we'll, we'll talk about uh, uh, the situation with our buyer, property came up, and it's been a little while since we were able to show them something in the neighborhood that they wanted. So the property came up, it looked great, and, and I knew our buyer client would, would love this property. It, the property was listed midday. I emailed it within an hour that it got listed. I emailed it to my client, and he loved it. The earliest he could see the property was late next morning, which seemed fine because there was an offer date set up on the property as there is with most listings these days. There was an offer date of a week in advance. So, hey, if we go see it next morning, it would normally be no problem. Well, an hour before our showing the next morning, I receive a message saying no more showings, property is sold firm which was a bit strange, I gotta tell you, because it was listed in the afternoon, and our real estate rules are very clear. If there's, especially if there's an offer date, and it's, uh, offer date is advertised on the MLS, all of us, all the realtors know the date, the offer date is in seven days from now. If bully offers are received, and the seller chooses to entertain those offers to review them, could be one or more than one, then we all need to be notified. It's only fair, right? It's only fair to, to the public, it's fair to the buyers, it's fair to the real estate agents, it's fair to everybody that if you're advertising one date and something changes, everybody should know. Well, that didn't happen. And the next morning, actually, I tried to call the realtor Tried again, tried again, it was difficult to get a hold of. Eventually, midday, I reached him, and he said, oh yeah, we received a bully offer that evening, and the seller chose to accept it. The seller might be happy with that offer. What the seller doesn't know is that my client was prepared to spend more on that property than the offer they accepted. And there might be other buyers like that. The, the way that whole, we received the bully offer, the way it wasn't managed, or the, how poorly it was managed, I believe there's money, lots of money that was left on the table. The seller might have been happy with the number, but in most cases, properties are selling these days more than what the seller expects. If that whole offer presentation is managed properly, if that bully offer that they dealt with one was managed, I know for sure they could have had more than one offer competing and got more money for the house. So who you hire matters. Yes, my buyer client was a bit disappointed in the way it was handled, but I got to tell you that seller lost out on a whole bunch of money if they just would have hired the right realtor and that realtor was just after the quick sale, which is sad because it's a disservice to their client, the seller. Who you hire matters, it's so important, especially in such a tight competitive market like we have today. Let's get into the numbers. Here we go, the first market report of 2022 for week ending January 5th for the City of Toronto. If you want to talk to me, anything at all related to real estate, it's really simple. In the description below, there's a link to my calendar. Book a time that's convenient for you. This way I'll know ahead of time, I'll organize my schedule so we could talk about whatever's on your mind. Let's get into the numbers. I'm going to start off with 
a, a year over year review. This is just for the city of Toronto, so I don't have any suburbs in these numbers. And it's just for detached properties. So there's no semis, there's no condos, there's no towns, just detached properties. When we compare year over year, well, for 2020, average sold price was 1,000, 1 million, sorry, 1 million 479,000 was the average sold price in 2020. For the year of 2021, the year we just finished, the average sold price was 1 million 718,000. That's a 16.2% increase year over year. That's a huge increase, naturally. 16% is phenomenal. When we look at just the second half of 2021, because you know, 2021 has got 12 months. Who cares what happened a year ago? Let's look at the momentum that we're going into 2022 with. Well, the second half of 2021, the average sold price was 1738000 So higher than what we have there, obviously, for the year average. $1,738,000 was, the, if you're looking at what's happening going into this year, this is the more realistic number to be looking at. Let's look at another chart, and I'm going to need your help here because I'm going to ask you questions. I'm going to need some comments from you here. This chart here, the green, these are listings, and it's just, again, just for Toronto Detached. You have the listings here, and we have the sales here in the white. I, I hope you can read it there. I'll, I'll call out some of the numbers. But when we look at listings, when we go kind of way back in the from 2002 to 2008, we were listing 23, 24,000 listings a year. Now, last year we listed 7,000, just under 17,300 listings for last year, for 2021. But at one point we were listing 20, 23, 24,000. Then from 2009 to 2015, we were listing 19,000 or so every single year. And then after that, 2016, we basically, except for one year we had 19,000, we've been listing around 17,000 a year for the last five years now. So when I say this year we listed almost 17,300, that's kind of on par with what we've been listing for the last five and six years. It's kind of normal every year. Sales, however, that's a whole different story. Sales has been going up every single year since, since 2018. At one point we were selling 13 and 12,000 a year. Then we were selling 11,000 a year. Now we've been around for the last few years around eight and 9,000 a year. But last year we sold 11,481. Let's say 11,500 detached properties. So sales went through the roof. So listings, have stayed the same for the last five, six years, we'll call it. Sales last year went through the roof, where sales went up actually 18.3% versus the previous year. So sales went up 18%, listings went up only 4% over the previous year. So right away you could see, well, if sales went up 18%, why wouldn't listings also go up to kind of keep up? Well, it doesn't work that way. And this is how we're having a, a a problem with not enough supply to to fulfill the demand demand went way up not su supply not so much and if you go back 20 years well this problem has been compounding and compounding where we used to list 24,000 now we're listing 17,000 it's been compounding so but if we just talk about the last little while here the last few years especially with last year with interest rates being slashed demand is just through the roof i'd like to know what you think the government needs to do or anybody needs to do to fix the situation if you think the government can motivate people to list more properties or if you think the government could motivate builders to build more put more inventory out there let me know if you think that's possible and how that's going to happen in the comments below. If you think the government should be suppressing demand, if you believe they can't do anything with supply, but suppress demand so less people are looking to buy, let me know what you think the government should do there. Also, let's get the discussion going in the comments below. 
So breaking down now things on a weekly basis, the charts I would normally do, I, I got to tell you, when we're dealing with the holiday season, you had your, your Christmas break and then we had the, the New Year's and the holidays there. It's really hard to take these numbers seriously because, it, well, it's so easy for the average sold price to be skewed when sales are this low. For example, last week we sold only 33 detached properties. 12 of those were at $2 million or more, so more than a third. Well, naturally, average sold price is through the roof, but it's, it's the, the, the sample of sales is not realistic. It's not indicative of really the whole city of Toronto territory. When you do 200 sales and 300 sales, you get more of a realistic average sold price. But with 33 sales, the sale price is not realistic. So we sold 33, comparing it to last year, well, last year's price was unrealistic. <laughs> this year's price at that time also is unrealistic. Kind of doesn't make sense to do that. 61% of those 33 that did sell, sell it, sold at list price or more. Listings, we listed 86 detached properties, which is up from the previous week where we listed only 28. And months of inventory is sitting at 2.4, but also it's not really, it's not really a real number. Being in the field every day with buyers and sellers, I can tell you it's as competitive as ever. There's very little choice out there. And when a property does come up, there's lots of competition for it. So it feels more like 0 0.8 or 0 0.5 months of inventory than, than the 2.4. When we break Toronto down into the three separate areas, West Toronto, we sold only eight detached properties in West Toronto. Central Toronto, we sold only nine. And in East Toronto, we sold, where are we here? 16 detached properties in all of East Toronto. Looking at semis, we sold only six semis. So again, it's not a, a true sample to get a true average sold price. Only six were sold, uh, and uh, da, 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 the average sold price is lower than what it was. Months of inventory really don't, don't, don't play into what's actually going on with semis right now. And actually, I should mention something here. I, I had a question on, on one of the comments on YouTube, how average days on market sometimes is not on par with months of inventory. You figured that when months of inventory are really low, Average days on markets should also be low. And in theory, yes, but in reality, not so much. They're, they're, they're often not connected, and, and here's why. Average days on market basically takes, if the property was sold, here's what it looks like. If the property was sold during the week in question here, so in this case, week ending January 5th, well, we take how many days that listing has been on the market and we of all those sales, and we make an average. Well, what if one of those properties that was sold wasn't priced properly and has actually been on the market for three months, four months, while all the other ones have been on the market for three days and four days? Well, there's still an average days on market. And that one property that's been on the market for a long time will just bring up the average days on market. That's why it's not necessarily correlated to what's going on with months of inventory. Toronto townhouses. There were none, zero, no townhouses were sold across the city of Toronto for week ending January 5th. So I have no numbers to show you there. Let's look at condos. Now I'm breaking down the condo chart similar to what I did with the detached market. When we look at condos, the average sold price from 2021 versus 2020, average sold price is 5.9% higher 2021 versus 2020. When we look at the second half, average sold price is 732,000. Same story with listings and, and sales as there was with detached, but it's way more obvious in the condo markets here. So sales year over year, sales went up 2021 versus 2020 by 51.7%. That's a huge number. Sales went way up, almost 52% higher than 2020 to 2020. Listings actually went down 1.2%. So sales were so much more, but listings came down 
Can you see, you know, the demand is so much higher than it was the previous year, but listings, we'll say it stayed the same, but it went down 1.2%. Here's where the problem is. And, and again, let me know in your comments below what's going to happen, what should, we're assuming it's the government is going to do something about it. I don't see anyone else stepping up doing anything about this. How do we, is it, a, do we fix, do we try to get more listings out there? Do we suppress demand? How, or we just leave it alone, let it run its course. But we're not leaving things alone. When the government drops the interest rates the way they did, they, they created this monster themselves. So we can't say leave it alone because it was never left alone to begin with. Let's look at condos. Same idea. Sales are extremely low. 136 condos were sold. It's, it's a better average though than the detached market where we said, you know, just over 30 were sold. 136 were sold. Average sold price, 715,000. That's 18% higher than the previous year. Of the 136, 47% sold at list price or more. Listings went way up from the previous week. The previous week we listed 84. Last week for week ending January 5th, we listed 242. This is what we want to see, more listings, more listings to help deal with the, the appetite of, of people that want to buy. And months of inventory is sitting at 1.5. When we look at the overall average, I mean, I'd love to tell you that, you know, we're sitting here in a balanced market and look how high none of these, except for maybe the condo market, none of these months of inventory are a true reflection of what's happening. And it's just because the numbers are all skewed with the holiday season. That's the first report for the, the year. Please comment below on how we're going to deal with this whole imbalance, this whole chaos in our market of supply and demand. Have a great day. My name is Santos Sessa with Remax Premier.